Hello everyone, hope you're doing well. Today in War Thunder we're going to be having a look at the two change logs or the server updates that we've had over the last week. But before we get started, I just want to point you towards a poll uh, that it would be nice, you know, if you uh, take part in. So, on the community tab on uh, the European Canadian channel, the one that you're on right now, I'm running a poll basically talking about what uh, streams uh, people would like to see going forward. One of the things about January and February is that it's kind of a quiet period uh, for War Thunder, and uh, I always take it as a time where I can play some other stuff, especially on the channel. And uh, I picked five games here uh, that, you know, I'd like to play. And the reason why War Thunder isn't one of them is because I already play a lot of War Thunder. I don't want to live stream it, and also the ping that I get on it is not, you know, very good. On top of this, I do want to do something which is similar to like a monthly Q&A. Uh, maybe at the end of each month I could do a live stream like that. But the idea is to do about maybe five days of live streams, you know, uh, each week and, uh, you know, one or two hours at a time. And also on top of the War Thunder videos. For me, uh, this is easily manageable. And uh, if you want to put in your input, please do. And if you want to suggest another game, uh, please leave a comment uh, instead on the thing. So, uh, let's get started on these uh, updates. As I said, there is only two of them, uh, so uh, around this time uh, there isn't really a lot going on in War Thunder. It's kind of a relaxing period. Uh, I see it as the time in War Thunder where uh, I go and research parts of the trees that I'm generally, you know, uh, haven't fulfilled, or, you know, I feel like there are some vehicles that maybe I should try and spade, stuff like that. So right now, obviously working through the Italian tree and everything like that, and uh, yeah, the next major updates for War Thunder will be in March, uh, so we're probably not going to be getting a lot of information about it until around February. I do have some dev server uh, file videos coming up, which will hopefully pave a path towards you know what we're going to see in the future but right now let's get stuck into the server update so the first one is um, the server update for the 9th of the 1st uh, 2019 and a bug where in realistic ground battles the wrong repair time indicators were displayed has been fixed and now they are correct according to 1.85 update change log so if you don't know what this uh, is talking about the repair time indicators uh, let's see if it actually takes us to it uh, or not. Nope, of course it doesn't, but basically they introduced a, not really a new mechanic in update 1.85, but it's been growing in update 1.85, where uh, if you don't have parts, or even if you do have parts, uh, there is a way in realistic battles to be able to um, not automatically repair your stuff, uh, but to get it to a position where it's not black and destroyed and get it to a percentage of working efficiency. So if you don't want to repair your vehicle, uh, you can, you know, just let that happen. And then you have some limited movements, whether it's with the turret ring, the engine, the transmission, you know, the breach, all of this stuff. Uh, and it's obviously always much better to just repair it. And, um, the <laughs> issue was while repairing and also with this new system, it was displaying the wrong times, meaning that uh, it would be like halfway around and then it would just suddenly come onto action. So luckily that's fixed, but it was kind of annoying. Uh, the requirements for unlocking rank 4 for the USSR fleet have been increased, and now they are the same as other nations to unlock rank 4. It is required to purchase 5 vessels from rank 3. So the reason why it was lower... Uh, compared to the other three nations that we have in the game is because, well, they had less destroyers. So it's kind of as simple as that. And with the introduction of update 1.85, uh, they uh, added two more destroyers, I believe, to the Soviet line. Uh, they added two more destroyers and then the Krasny Krim, uh, meaning that it had two light cruisers and a bunch uh, of destroyers now. So with that said, uh, it makes complete sense to me now to increase uh, the amount of stuff you have to do to unlock uh, rank 4. I'm still kind of looking personally for uh, opinions on light cruisers and destroyers, how people are generally finding them. I'm personally, you know, not too interested in them uh, when it comes to playing. I've played through the German destroyers now and the British destroyers, and 
and you know it's okay, but it, it's nothing special. Uh, so I, I'm kind of throwing it out to you guys. You know, what are your opinions on naval? Where would you like it to go? You know, all that stuff. Those are the comments I generally like reading in the comment sections. Anyway, uh, let's move on to the next one, uh, which was 1.85.0.83 on the 14th of the first. Uh, so this was still about a week ago. Uh, a bug has been fixed where in some rare cases a field repair on ground vehicles automatically starts and during simultaneous start takes longer than a normal repair which needs to be activated manually, the default F key. <laughs> Wait a second. <laughs> Wait a second. How did that come about? Let's just see. Automatic punishment system. Oh, yeah, they added that, which is pretty cool. Uh, okay, they haven't listed it here, but I understand what they're saying. Uh, that's kind of funny, where the, <laughs> the field repair for ground vehicles uh, would uh, start uh, at the same time as the normal repair, and it would make it take longer. So it's basically doubling up. Uh, so that's kind of nice <laughs> that that's a way meaning that uh, the repairs will be shorter compared to before. A bug has been fixed where after reconnection of audio output devices on a PC, no sound is played in the game. That's wonderful. Uh, they also added in the functionality uh, where you can actually change, you know, what uh, audio output you have while you're in the game. Before, in War Thunder, if you wanted to change the output of the audio, you actually had to quit the game and launch it again uh, while, you know, changing the settings whereas now you can actually do it in game uh, which is a good step uh, forward because it means that it's a lot easier for the general person uh, to know what's going on incorrect armor penetration displayed in italian vehicle cards has been corrected well that's wonderful stuff more uh, more correct information is better i'm personally right now in the middle of uh, rank four of the uh, Italians, I've ground out all three of the whippets, uh, <laughs> the, the one with the one recoilless, the two recoilless, and now the AUBL74. I've personally been having a lot of fun with them, apart from the fact that 50 cows exist and <laughs> are able to uh, pretty much mash me whenever they feel like it. But I have been enjoying them a lot. The festival seasonal hangar has also been switched off. Uh, obviously, I the the seasonal hangar is nice. Uh, it is nice to get different hangers at different times of the year. The issue I personally had with the seasonal hangar that we had this time, it was very dark, and I understand that with the post effect settings I run, uh, it generally does make stuff kind of dark. Uh, but this was exceptionally dark. Uh, meaning that uh, a lot of the time I couldn't really see what was going on, and I still had the same issue on the dev uh, server when I don't actually use those type those post FX settings. I use a different set of them just for recording. Uh, the possibility of exchanging coupons with special 3D decorations and decals from the festive quest event has been added for PlayStation 4 and Xbox players in the workshop. Exchange is possible until seventh. Uh, 7 GMT on the 14th of February. So that's nice. Uh, it basically means because you don't have access to the marketplace, uh, you have to, you know, you can trade them within yourself uh, on your own independent time in the workshop. And you've got about a month to do that. One of the things uh, that is uh, nice to see is that, you know, the Gaijin market is doing well uh, with uh, player controlled pricing. And it, it seems like people aren't going through the roof with a lot of vehicles, uh, which is lovely. I was actually able to pick up the Lag 334 and the uh, Soviet, uh, the Soviet M3 Lee uh, for pretty decent prices, and uh, that's from selling some stuff from this uh, actual, you know, this actual thing here. One thing I would have liked, uh, looking back on the festive event, because overall I thought the festive event went really well. Uh, I liked the selection of stuff that they gave away. I didn't think it was overpowered. I, I thought it was pretty nice. Uh, even the decals and the decorations were good. The one change I would make for next time would be to make sure that with the decals and decorations, uh, you can only get one once, uh, you know. Well, basically, there were seven decals and seven guns in the form of decorations and you could actually get multiple ones of them, uh, multiples of the same one, and I understand why they're doing this. It's so you, you have to use the market, but I would prefer if they just did, 
you know, uh, give people nine opportunities to be able to get the decals and decorations in different ways. So you are guaranteed to get the seven uh, for each nation, and then you can get extra ones that you can then double dabble on the marketplace. But instead, you know, we had situations where people were ending up with three of the same decal or, um, you know, three of the same decoration. And obviously, if you're on PS4 or if you're on Xbox, that's fine. But what if you are in one of those countries uh, which has banned loot, box, uh, loot boxes? And if you've all, if either any of you have been keeping up with the loot box idea, uh, <laughs> when we look at it in the EU and America, there have been massive pushes in America uh, through uh, what looks like eventually will become legislation, uh, turning the idea of game loot boxes into actual gambling. Therefore, it will have to be either taken out of the US region uh, by Gaijin, or it will have to mean that War Thunder itself's age rating goes through the roof. Uh, on top of this, you would have to, uh, depending on the state that... Well, I'm not exactly sure how this would work, but I understand in America, depending on the state, uh, you have to... There are certain rules and regulations you also have to stand by, but... I'm not sure how that would work for an international game. On top of this, the EU has already talked about banning loot boxes completely uh, in gaming, but they seem to be more bothered about trying to censor the whole internet uh, for some mega corporations. So maybe, you know, they'll fall on the side of the mega corporations when it comes to the loot boxes as well. Anyway, uh... <laughs> Yeah, I've um it's been a busy it's been a busy few weeks and quite frustrating uh, if you've been looking at uh, European politics. Anyway, uh, back to War Thunder itself. As you can see, not a lot is going on in this period of time, uh which means that it is a little bit of a lull and it means that we can look at other projects, which is why I am personally looking forward to do the streaming stuff. Hopefully you can join me there. Uh, I think the first few will be some Nautica Men of War and we'll see what what happens going forward. If you're not already part of the Tech Hub Discord, there is a link in the description and we will be running more events and stuff over the next uh, few weeks or so. And as always, I hope you all have a wonderful day and I'll see you next time.